It wasn't a common tap, tap here and a tap, tap there. No, they were steady fighting to prove their point. And when you were doing that as a witness, you win somebody's soul. Sometimes they may not get saved for five years, ten years, but because you kept hammering, they may come in at the eleventh year, the fifth, the sixth year. Why? Because you had compelling evidence and you didn't let up. You were consistent. Say that. So the witness, you gotta have the witness. And you gotta witness from from the very beginning. And then in first Peter, chapter second Peter chapter one, verse sixteen. We are eyewitnesses not only of just what we saw. It's more than that. Of Peter and John and James. When they first became eyewitnesses of him, he had to send them. They didn't have enough function to go on now. But something had to happen. Which your witness has to take form. Look at me in, in 2 Peter chapter 1. And verse 16 through 18. I want you to study with me today, saints of God. Study with me. Stay with me. Don't 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 talk. Just stick with this word. This is for we have not followed cunningly devised fables. See, we don't need to be following Humpty Dumpty set on the wall. And you know, the Lord is able. All these fables people come up with. God can do anything but fail. I don't need to hear these man-made fables. We ain't following that. We ain't following these man-made up. You, you know, God, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Well, if you know that, then let's tell what he did. Ain't no sense in always running around talking about this ice cream, good, 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 good. Let me taste it. Say amen. I don't like people always talking, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. What he did? What he did to make it so good? What's your witness? What's your eyewitness? What's your testimony? Tell me what he did to make it so good so I can determine that whether he's good or not. You make it a statement, but I have sense too. And we have to go through, we have to go through the system of reasoning with people. Because people got minds, they're not done. You gotta be able to run the word of God and your witness through the sense of their reasoning and their rationality. You can't just shoot past them with any old thing. You gotta work through with their reasoning. He said, We have not followed fables, cunningly devised, fix up fables to get people hooked on, and denominations and names. For we made for when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Many of them that saw Jesus, they never became saved. You know why? Because they never was revealed the spiritual part. What makes people lay down their witness after they first get saved? They stop connecting to the spiritual part. He said we were eyewitness of his majesty. That means his kingly and majestic power. We saw how great and awesome he was. It was revealed to us through the Holy Ghost that he is the Son of God and he is God. They were saying we saw, amen, him. What did they mean by that? Well, one of them, amen, went and, and, and three of them went up and they said they saw him on the Mount of Transfiguration. They saw him glorified. They saw him transfigured. And then when he went up there, amen, they, they looked and they saw and he just changed into, into just you could transparently see through him. They saw his glory, the incense of God. Many people are following God, but they never see the anointed Jesus. They see a man Jesus. They never see past the flesh of Jesus. They only see the carnal, natural walk on earth Jesus. But they don't see the, the majestic, glorious, revealed, crushed out in the flesh and raised up in the spirit and become on the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Isaiah didn't see it for a while, but about the sixth chapter, he said in the year King of Isaiah, 
everybody died, then I saw there for the Lord. And he was high and lifted up, and his train did fill the temple. And he said, and the doorpost, he moved on his throne, and the doorpost moved on his engine. And he said, the seraphim hid their face because of the power of God, and the smoke did fill the room. What is Isaiah talking about? He's talking about, he saw the powerful, majestic, God opened his eyes. He said, I saw all these things and I saw the angel fly off the altar. And he took the hot coal off the altar and he put it upon my lips. And he said, now, he said, your lips are purred. And he said, woe is me, woe is me. I dwell among people with unclean lips. I'm a man of unclean lips. He was repenting for his sin because he had got quite delivered. And I got news for some of you. Some of your hidden agenda is holding you from seeing the majestic Christ Jesus. Some of your little secrets that you hold that nobody know about in here. Your little pride that you exercise when you're not around us looking up at it. Some of your little your little pricks and your little ticks and your little this and that. Those little things that you do when you're away from around the church and away from around the saints. When you don't talk about Jesus, you get mixed in with the worldly crowd. You blend in with the proud and the mighty. You blend in with the people talking about cars and houses and homes. You got all tied up with that mess and you can't see the glory of God because Uzziah is in your eyes. But God said, I in the year King Uzziah died. That's when I saw the Lord. You gotta die out of your pride. You gotta die out of your watching filth on the television. You gotta die out of wanting to do your little stinky stuff. You ain't gonna see the glory of God and be an eyewitness if you don't let Uzziah die. You gotta let Uzziah die. King Uzziah represents every vain thing in your life. It represents everything that is not like God in your life. King Your karma man got to die. King Uzziah is your karma man. King Uzziah is your old nature. Some of us still got the nature to be one to be looked up to. We just waiting for somebody to look up to us and see that we are greater than all. Well, we see, we trying to be our own Lord and still worship God. It ain't over. Because you can't have two God. Some of us try to do your sin on this side and serve God mostly on the other side. 90% God and 10% the devil equals 100% the devil. Amen. You can't have God and the devil too. Amen. God won't mix with sin. Amen. So when you got a hidden agenda, you got to let that die before God could reveal the true Jesus Christ to you in his full majesty and glory. You gotta come, you gotta see him on your altar, in your spirit or in your dream or in your vision. When you get all the mess out the way of your carnality and your slack and slow for studying and your slack and slow for praying, you gonna see God move when you pray regular. Study shit God with all your Pour all the bad stuff out. Bring in the good stuff and let God hide in you. You gonna see the glory Of the 22 elders around the throne, you're gonna see the revelation of the five beasts around the around the altar of God. You're gonna see the revelation of the thunders that thunder from heaven. You're gonna see revelations. And see, that's why sometimes people don't like ministries like this because they just won't be left alone to stay carnal. Ministries like this won't leave you carnal because you can't make it to heaven being a carnal Christian. You cannot make it to heaven be a carnal Christian. The Bible said the carnal man cannot perceive the thing with be of God, neither can they because they are spiritually deserved. He that is carnal will mind the, of the flesh will mind the things of the flesh. He that is of the spirit will mind the things of the spirit. You cannot be in the spirit and you're walking in the flesh. You can have it here so you think people at church don't see it. But God see it. When you don't have that majestic revelation of Christ, that kingly revelation of Jesus being Lord of Lord and, 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 and God of all creation and Lord over your life, 
You're not going to see the full glory of God. You're not going to be a true eyewitness. See, when they saw Jesus at first, he was the man walking the earth. But then they went and they saw him when he raised from that grave and they came back and they stood there and watched him before he ascended.